What do we mean by uh, federalism, Indian federalism? Huh. So can you please explain the symbol? Uh, Indian federalism is, again, it is not a fully federal country, as I said. It is a semi federal, unlike, uh, say, US federalism. Now, US federalism, every state, every province has a say, same number of uh, members in the Senate. So every state together can defeat even the President uh, or even the House of Representatives decisions. Because state, every state, whether big or uh, large, prosperous or otherwise, they have the same two votes. The state has a power there. But here, even in Rajya Sabha, two things are happening in Rajya Sabha. That is, one is it is fought on a political basis. Secondly, it uh, depends upon the number of uh, MLAs each uh, assembly has. A state like Kerala with 20 uh, seats, you have that, uh, whereas UP, they get a uh, predominant uh, representation. So it actually, unlike the US federalism or uh, Swiss federalism, uh, Australian and all you have, uh, it is not a fully federal country. Even according to the constitution. Actually, this year Indian constitution, the fiscal relations, that is exactly lifted uh, from the Government of India Act 1935. All those provisions were only lifted except that uh, there is a change. And so, Viceroy in uh, Council, you have changed into President of India. Otherwise, but even that has been now whittled down uh, to this present state with states having no power. Practically, no power. So, I think basically, now I think there is an old saying that the, the king is dead, long live the king. That is the status of federalism in uh, India today. Because there is, you are going to, uh, you are getting into a highly centralized polity and economy. Your finance commission, the person constitution, or the finance minister, I see the chairman being a retired uh, finance secretary. And even the terms of reference, I think they have changed in favour of the central government. So, that is one uh, major change which has actually sort of, what do you call the, defeated the idea of federalism. Then secondly, the issue of GST key, generalised system of uh, taxation. And uh, with the result, you are limited uh, powers for taxation even that have been taken away. That is, uh, then what remains with the state is this lottery income and this income from Todi and uh, uh, that is actually, that is how far it is good for the country state. That's a different uh, question. So this is, uh, then second question was, I written a paper on this, uh, the central inroads into state subjects. Now, that came now, and there is an edited volume along with the I.S. Gurathi process. That is, uh, you know, the, in the constitution you have this provision of central list, union list, then you have the state list and you have a conquest list, where both state and the central government can uh, uh, sort of legislate. But primarily, if the central legislation is there, then that gets precedence over the state list. But uh, we see problem which has come up is the central inroads have come not through the legislative inroad. What I call as a uh, fiscal uh, backdoor. 
in the sense you have numerous central central plan schemes then generally sponsored uh, schemes and there is a financial weight uh, given in the sense they will give body percent the central government will uh, give body percent then uh, if you implement it that is an attraction for you that is how in the last count when i worked on this issue with the planning board we had noticed about 300 uh, centrally sponsored scheme actually uh, what we found was that it was we were getting in the states were getting into a trap because if you want to get the central funds you will have to take up their priorities because you get uh, and your uh, money 60% is blocked on account of this so basically that is one then there was a legislative route that is you make constitutional amendments uh, at different times no so this is one way in which you have become more you <laughs> indian constitution as you know is actually supposed to be a semi federal constitution It's not a unitary constitution, but over a period of time, through these uh, constitutional amendments, through the legislative route, and through the fiscal backdoor. That uh, fiscal backdoor in the present time has come in earlier. There used to be what is known as the Gadgil formula for giving the central plan funds, but with the present government, the Gadgil formula has been taken away. so it is now left to the discretion of the central government to give whatever money you want to give to the uh, so basically that is the reality for a fiscal there is no fiscal autonomy for the state and the only source of revenue as i said is the lottery and the apparel is there constitutional amendments ഉണ്ടോ ഉണ്ട് യൂണിറ്ററിയിലേക്ക് എത്തി പോകുന്നുണ്ടോ കുറച്ച് എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് അല്ലെന്ന് മെൻഷൻ ചെയ്യാ എന്താ ഏതൊക്കെ പ്രൊവിഷൻസിലാണ് നമുക്ക് ഒരു ചേഞ്ച് ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കുന്നത് അല്ല കോൺസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷണൽ പ്രൊവിഷൻസ് ഇപ്പോ അതും ഈ കോൺസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂഷണൽ അമെൻഡ്മെന്റ് ഇക്കട അല്ല ഈ യു ആർ ഗിവിങ് എ ഫൈനാൻഷ്യൽ ബേറ്റ് ആ ബേറ്റ് യു കാൻ നോട്ട് ഇഫ് യു സേ ദാറ്റ് ഫോർ ഇൻസ്റ്റൻസ് no the central government has a scheme for uh, primary education universalization of primary education now that is no longer relevant for kerala because you are already our literacy program but then whether you give it you need it or not if you want to get that uh, 50% or 40% which is relevant for up or uh, bihar you will have to take this scheme so actually it is a waste of uh, our own uh, fiscal resources taxation powers your legislative powers all of them have been uh, eroded one by constitutional amendments i can uh, the role of the governor the governor is supposed to be a independent uh, person but now you find that all the governors our party appointees then planning commission is abolished though it was not a constitutional body but it used to have a gadgil formula under what criteria you will have to allocate the plan funds now with the abolition of the planning system you don't have that uh, formula any longer so it is totally it has become a uh, discretionary transfer and that discretion depends upon whether you are uh, politically favored uh, by the present government or otherwise so that is but today you know that uh, as i mentioned uh, through the fiscal backdoor uh, it is uh, and gst is the last uh, and unfortunately i must say that Kerala government did not put up a fight on principle. I worked uh, 
with Ashok Mehatra, West Bengal Finance Minister, along with Ulabdi. Now, Ashok Mehatra was strongly in favor of uh, rights of the states. West Bengal, uh, that government has gone. Even in the last stage, I think after the demise of Ashok Mehatra, Jyoti Vasu and all that, there has been a sort of uh, weakening on the left. Now in West Bengal it is gone. Now only remaining here is Kerala. Kerala, in now we have also succumbed. The central government has given. <laughs> we accepted that uh, because in the present uh, government in Kerala, uh, they said that uh, over the next five years you will be getting a larger share. Your revenue loss will be compensated. But unfortunately, the GST revenue itself has uh, come down. Now, the Kerala government is now have organized a seminar in Trivandrum and all that, saying you are trying to protect. But you already committed. And what can you do? So there has an argument that if Kerala is a consumer state, uh, we will be, if GST is properly implemented, uh, we will be... That was actually the understanding. But the whole uh, GST collection in the state, it is coming down, so you only get a smaller uh, share. That assumption, that was what it was, uh, that is on that assumption that we have agreed for this GST. With sale tax was the principal uh, revenue so it's for uh, a state. With that being surrendered, that being surrendered, now you don't have any revenue source of your own, except the property tax. Now, except for the Tapkari tax and the lottery. So do you think that GST principle itself is problematic or the uh, It is both problematic and implementing. That is uh, problematic in the sense Constitution, if you, you know, there is an old saying that there is no spending powers, there is no taxation. If you don't have a taxing power, then your autonomy is uh, very notional. This is what has happened. So, in, in principle, in a federal uh, constitution, the state must have the power to tax. But uh, even in uh, our constitution, the rights of the state for uh, taxation was largely limited. Again, unlike, uh, say, U.S. Uh, federalism and all that. In U.S. and all the states have uh, larger powers for taxation. Now, even municipalities can have a, a income tax and all that. But that is... But here, even whatever little... Uh, power you had been <laughs> taken away. You know, what is happening today is that uh, on every front they are uh, opening a new battle front. And uh, till now, I think politically they have been successful in that. Article 2, 370, abolition. So, all other states uh, by and large, except uh, Jim and Gashmi. Now, with this. Blessed question which you are. Uh, that actually, Kerala, it is already. You have. Uh, earlier itself, we have accepted this three language formula. But if the resistance can come from Bengal, then Karnataka has already resisted, then Tamil Nadu can. And Tamil Nadu. Uh, it can be a very emotional issue. Unlike Malayali, we are not emotionally except on party lines. And otherwise, I was there in Madras uh, during the anti-Hindi agitation in the 60s. Anti-India, actually, how many languages uh, in India you have? Their own literature, their own culture. You know, that is what I find is uh, my granddaughter, uh, she has gone into this English medium. And then you have uh, 
they also introduced hindi there what did you know about valathol or uh, uh, any malayali literature or culture language is a medium of uh, culture also they will not care about kunjan nambiar or ethnic which 